Well, this Saturday, I'm at the, uh, the Fontainebleau State Park in uh, Louisiana. My plan is to be at a different state park for the next two or three weeks, but to record on a Saturday normally, that's what I plan to do. I want to tell you a story, the story of my life. I think you guys are going to find out that I've done more crap than any guys you've ever known before. I thought for a long time how I might tell this story. I thought I would begin at mise-en-scene, I learned while I was in college as a later student. That just means starting in the middle. But you know, when I realized what was going to be in the middle, you know, I'd gone belly up, done been busted, and I was flipping hamburgers at Whataburger as an assistant manager trainee when I was in my late 30s. Not an exciting place to start a story. So I decided to forget all that. I'm going to start at the beginning. I'm going to tell you my life from the beginning chronologically. So what I'm going to do is begin with where did I come from? Where did it all start? So this episode I'm calling Worth You Farm. Believe it or not, I was born on a farm. I was born to Roy Robert Taylor and Francis Virginia Guy. Now, to tell you a little bit about who I am, I kind of have to tell you their story because being the son of those people has made me who I am today. So I have to go back and explain a little bit about Roy and Francis. Now, this was my mom and dad, but at the same time, they were so social and so active and doing the things they did. We used to refer to them as the Roy and Francis show, even the kids, because they were something. They were a case, let me tell you what, growing up with those guys. But it begins like this. Francis had a blue baby book. It was so full of stuff you can't believe it. So she had so many friends that were nursing friends, we'll explain in a minute, that she knew from when she was in the army overseas in Europe, and all of her buddies and friends and nurse friends were all sending her congratulations. She had all the, the litany of lists of things in her showers of all the baby presents she had gotten because Francis was having a son. Now, my dad, who was from a rural community up in Cavanus, Texas, uh, north end of Lamar County, he was older than my mother. They had both been married before. My mother was 15 years younger than my father. He was a successful businessman, but he always wanted sons. He had a daughter by our first marriage, my sister Bobby, but he wanted sons. And I was the first one that came along. Well, there was a big deal about that. I was a very wanted child. She messed with that blue baby book until it became a tome of all the inserts of the gifts given in the little baby pictures and oh my God, it was a deal to be brought up by these people. My dad was sort of what I call uh, rural proud, a kind, of a, a kind of a proud man in a crude way because he only had a sixth grade education. He wore loud cowboy shirts and used to wear a hat all the time, a white cowboy hat usually. Uh, he was in the aircraft business and he was a rancher and a cattleman both. My mother, who was a lieutenant in the army, a nurse, and the daughter of a colonel that was in the Air Force, I mean in the army, and so she had been brought up in an army environment, but because of her father being a base commander and her mother having access to housekeepers and cooks, and my, in fact my grandfather used to have a valet, so they were used to a certain lifestyle. When they married my dad, she married my dad, he was at a point where his success of his careers, his career was such that they were doing pretty well. They, I can't say they were wealthy, but they were doing well. And after they married, they bought a farm, Worthview Farm. This is the place where the log house was. It had a split rail fence around it. And when I was born, that was the only life I knew. We had goats and chickens and peacocks and geese and horses and cows, in fact, we had two old Jersey milk cows. And as a little boy growing up with short pants and boots and trying to stay out of the bull nettles, it was an experience to grow up on that farm. There were people that lived there. Mr. Queen lived over in one house. Frank and Ida lived over in another house. And 
Miss Jack came every day. She was the, the, the cook for the house. And we lived with a black lady that had been my mother's nanny who lived downstairs. Her name was Josephine. I never saw her do a whole lot besides sit in the kitchen, snap beans, and tell stories. Which I want to go back to stories. That's another thing about being the son of Roy and Francis show is they were so full of stories. Stories about Europe, stories about the war. My dad could tell you stories about airplanes he'd crashed and knocked the wings off of flying between two airplanes in East Texas. Stories about where he's landed somewhere in Amarillo because he had a force landing from a bad engine and ended up selling the rancher where he was the airplane. I mean, these people were replete with stories. They were more of that than anything. So it was my early experience. I'd have to also say they were very liberal. For example, when Josephine finally got old enough to retire, not to know what to do about Josephine, my dad bought her a liquor store over on Camp Bowie Street in Fort Worth. That way Josephine could take care of herself in her old age. What kind of parents do that? I mean, they were just, they were progressive before there was a word for progressive, and I was their child. They were not religious. We didn't grow up in a religious house, except for one thing I want to say. My father, being a rural man from the country, his kin, which I'll explain later, they were all very religious, most of them Church of Christ. My mother's side of the family were not. Episcopal, Presbyterian, sort of whatever, but we were never insisted upon having to attend Sunday school, except one exception. Summertime, when we went to visit the cousins that were the Marie Taylor and Fudge Taylors and the Taylor side of the family. Well, then we were off to vacation Bible school, which was a strange experience for us, my bro little brother and I. I mean, all I can remember about most of that is it was, <laughs> it was like dried up stick in your throat graham crackers and lukewarm Kool-Aid. I mean, if you can picture that. But that baby book kept getting built. And now I have it somewhere with all the little baby rings and the spoons and the stuff that was all the gifts that were given. I have a home movie that I'll share with you. What it was like, I think they were taking 16 millimeter pictures of me learning how to walk. And I was falling down a lot more than I was walking. There's also movies of me when I got my, I was just really small, but I, I got my first horse. It was a paint horse. I remember it vividly. I mean, what kid doesn't want to remember your horse? So. Uh, it was uh, quite an experience growing up on this farm, Worthy Farm. It literally was a log house, kind of picture this and covered with some overgrown shrubbery because it was, they should have cut it back way before they did. It had a split rail fence around the front of it and it was on Precinct Line Road in the north part of, or the eastern part of Tarrant County. It was a magical place. How do you explain what that's like? You got all these people that live here that do what they do. I, I mean, I remember Mr. Frank. They were, Ms. Ida and, and Mr. Frank, they were from Germany. They, my dad had helped them come over from Germany to help them have a life in the United States. And I have such memories of going down into the barn and uh, he'd have his cheek leaned up against that old Jersey cow and he'd be pulling milk into the pan and you'd hear it going swish, 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 swish. And then all of a sudden I'd come in and go, Mr. Frank, Mr. Frank, there's a kitty. And he had turned one of those teats around and pew, blast that kitty right in the face with that milk. And they loved it. They came around for that jazz all the time. So Mr. Queen kept the garden. Now this garden was so big, he used a little small tractor to take care of it. But my kitchen in my home with Josephine snapping beans and Miss Jack cooking and Frances, my mother, coming in and out doing whatever she was doing and Mr. Queen walking in with fresh produce that just came out of that garden and Mr. Frank walking in with big pails of milk that they'd be churning for butter. It was like what you'd want to live if you had the money and you could afford it. <laughs> That's what they did and I got to benefit from it. I got to see what it was like to be brought up by people that had a little bit of means and that's what they did. Now my dad, being from a sort of a Western background, he fancied himself the way he dressed with his loud Western shirts and his hat. Uh, liked to wear a suit of clothes and a Western hat. 
kind of in the LBJ mode, if you will, about the way men dressed back in those days. He was born in 1903. He was 45 years old when I was born, so it was a little bit like being raised by a grandfather with a different set of rules that could be very stern, actually. My mother being an army nurse, she kind of had a philosophy that all breeding stops eventually. So she didn't too get too worried about when you scraped your head or knocked your knees in the dirt. And if you weren't bleeding too bad, she was going to tell you to get back to the house and get a Band-Aid. But at the same time, they were loving and giving and very, very social. In fact, Margaret and Wayne Delfield went with my parents on their honeymoon to Mexico City. Some of that movie I'm going to show you is a picture of Margaret and Wayne and my parents in Mexico City. So anyway, Worthview Farm. I lived there through the first, the second, and the third grade. Caught the bus out front every time, every day. Had cousins that came to visit, and a lot. My mother. I got to tell you this story. You can. You remember those old cases that were women's makeup cases? It were these kind of square oblong things, and they they would have all their makeup stuff in it. My mother kept one of these by the back door, because my dad would call and say, "Francis, I've got to go to." Abilene to deliver an airplane, do you want to go? My mother was practically trained to hit that back door. She loved to go, she liked to dress up and put on, and they would go to events and go out to dinner and meet new people who were constantly coming to my house. Every airplane I think my ever dad sold in Fort Worth, Texas had been to my house for dinner just to entertain them, to thank them for their business, and dad would always present them with a white Stetson hat from Hatters in Fort Worth, Texas. Anyway, that was worth few farm. And uh, that's what it was like to grow up there. Uh, after the third grade, we moved. And that was another house that had a name. Now it's called Burton Hill. And uh, my parents thought they were moving up in the world because there's a man owned a chain of grocery stores in Fort Worth. His name was Buddy Markham. And Buddy Markham sold them his place in West Fort Worth, and we moved to Burton Hill. Anyway, next time I tell you a story, I'm going to tell you about Burton Hill. And then you'll remember what I told you about Worthy Farm and what it was like to be born in a log house. I mean, it sounds like one thing, but believe me, it was another. I hope you won't think I was too goddamn spoiled to be who I am today. But anyway, thanks for watching my video. Hope you'll ring the bell and subscribe and stay tuned. There's more to say. Thanks a lot. Thank you.